Hello Cup Coders, today we are playing Kerbal Space Program. And let's be honest, if the North Koreans can have a space program, so can the Cup Coders. And that's exactly what we're doing today. So today we're going to build our first rocket and launch it, essentially. Um, before, while we're doing that, before we do that or something like that, let me just give you a quick overview of what, what you're looking at here. It's a, it, it could be daunting. I don't know. I mean, when I first started playing, I, you know, as I always do, bounce around, looking at everything, see what everything does. Now, on this screen, this is your, I guess you can call it your space center, whatever. This right here, this is your main hangar bay for building your rockets. This is your main hangar bay for building ships, you know, like the, the airplanes and stuff, the ones that take off and land on the runway. This is your, I guess you can call it employee center. This is where you go to hire new employees. You'll come to this area, this is your science center. You have to come here to research more stuff when you're in the science, when you're in the career mode, which we are playing career mode. So we'll have to come here and research more science as we go up, as we progress through the game. This is the radar center. This allows you to look into other launches that you have out there so if you have other ships that are orbiting the planet you can come here and check in on them and switch to them and and control them this way and this over here is obviously it well, not so obvious but this is the launch pad so this is where we launch our rockets this back here is the runway for launching planes or landing them one of the two all right so we're going to go build a rocket first before we build that rocket, I want to show you a little bit about this screen here. Right here is where you are going to build the rocket. You have, we start with Command Pod Mark 1. We have LVT-30 liquid fuel engine. We have an RT-10 solid rock fuel rocket booster and an FLT-200 fuel tank. Now, tell you a little bit about these guys. If you're going to use a liquid fuel tank like this one, you have to have an engine to to provide thrust. These engines use the fuel from these to provide thrust. But if you're using a solid fuel bu booster, you do not need an engine. It has its own engine built on. Also, it is best to use solid fuel boosters to get out of the initial portion of the atmosphere it, to overcome the, the near ground gravity. When you get into space, you are going to want the liquid liquid tanks and engines because you can control the throttle with those with these once you fire them that's it you cannot control their speed you cannot shut them off they go until they're dead next we you know nothing on this tab we next we have modular girder segment this is for i don't know building larger ships and have, it's like structure to keep your ships together or something i rarely ever use it and there's aerodynamic aerodyna aerodynamic stuff goes on this tab. I uh, have utility stuff here, which we ha happen to have the Mark 16 parachute. And then we have science, which we happen to start with the Communotron 16, which is really nothing but an elaborate antenna. So we're going to go ahead and build our first ship. You always start with your command module, which in this case is <laughs> the only one we have, the Mark 1. And we're just going to go up and come back down. So we're going to add a rocket fuel f booster. We currently don't have a whole lot of options as far as that goes. I mean, I could add a fuel tank, several fuel tanks and a liquid fuel engine that might get us up a little bit higher than this solid fuel booster will. But there's a main difference here is that the, these solid fuel boosters add a huge punch of power. For instance, this one provides a max engine power of 250. Whereas this one provides 215, so obviously right off right out the gate, the solid fuel booster is a little bit stronger than the liquid fuel engine, and that's kind of what we need for these first launches. The only other thing we can add to this right now is the parachute, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Right here is where you can name your spacecraft. In fact, that's where we're we're going to go ahead and name this. This is the Alpha Shot because it is the first rocket to be launched up i do not expect this to make this into space in fact it's not even going to make it into an orbit guys this is going to go up reach our upper atmosphere and come back down um 
in previous attempts I have tried to go EVA during this flight and it has always ended up with the Kerbin which is the, the guys on this planet you see all these guys in the background they're all Kerbins it has always ended up with the Kerbin letting go and falling away from the rocket and I am not very good at EVA flying with the, their little jetpacks when they're not in space I, in fact I haven't even tried it in space yet all right before we do that I'll show you a little bit more about this screen some other stuff down here you have symmetry mode so let me show you what this does so, that's, so I set that for the three mode in fact we're going to use this structural thing what it does is if we select this to build on to it as you see now it's going to place three of them around it evenly so if I had done this now I'll we'll set six of them so you can go do one two three four six or eight so that'll help with building larger ships and stuff this is, changes the angle snap and I'm quite honestly guys I've don't use this I've checked it out I'm not very happy with what it does so I just don't use it but as you see it doesn't snap the angles for you it kind of just smooths it around and it's not something that I use I tend to use this angle snap a lot more um, it's just what I'm used to <coughs> next thing is at the bottom of the screen you've got the center of mass here so that'll show you the center of all your mass combine that with the center of thrust you always want to keep your center of thrust below your center of mass and from what I understand you want the center of mass to be close to the center of your ship and this to be just below it if you have this above your center of mass there's going to be problems if it's too far below the center of mass your ship's going to roll over in as it's flying up uh, beyond that you also have the center of lift which right now we have zero center of lift that's why it's on the ground um, that is more important for planes for rockets however you really just going to pay attention to center of mass and center of thrust all right this shows you all of your groups which we don't have I haven't set up any groups it shows you all the group actions and quite frankly I haven't really learned what all that does here I haven't played with it a whole lot as as time goes on I'll probably learn a little bit more about it and I'll be able to tell you more but just for now know that it's there and this is for selecting your crew as you notice your crew does have two count them two statistics one for courage one for stupidity and as you see quite a few of the Kermans are stupid but we're just gonna leave it in here because he we don't really need him on this flight we're just keeping it manned because well kind of has to be manned all right over here is our staging area now we are going to change this because currently everything's in one stage which means if I go to launch this the moment I hit spacebar to fire that rocket it's also going to let out the parachute we don't want that so we're going to click here to add one more and I'm going to grab that rocket and move it down and that is it that's all we have to do here because you can keep these two together because it doesn't matter this doesn't really do anything it's this that's most important all right so we're gonna leave that as it is up top here we've got here like I said here's where you name it this is the flag your mission flag you can change the mission flag I always keep mine as Kerbin just because I like that one it looks better you can load a rocket here or decide to set a new rocket you click this button you can load a rocket here you save with this button or you launch with this button which is exactly what we're getting ready to do so we're gonna save and launch takes just a moment and then we'll be out here on the launch pad so this is what the launch pad looks like um, they have taken some pains to make it look realistic which I appreciate I really do like how how it's done uh, you're no matter how you build your rocket in there even if you built it way up above ground as soon as you come out here it's going to try to bring it down and place it down on top of the girdle there is another option device later that we can get that allow it you to hold your rocket up off ground but for now it brings it down and places it on top of the girdle all right so we're just going to go ahead and launch in five four three 
two, one. notice as we were flying you saw the solid fuel over here you also saw a red thing come out that is warning you of an overheating problem that the engine was overheating at this stage it's not a major concern but later on when you're using more and more engines or you have your engines closer and closer together then it will become a concern because if your engines overheat in mid-flight they can explode causing your entire rocket to go up in smoke all right also on this screen we'll show you a little bit about this while we're flying obviously you see at the top of this screen here it is showing our current altitude here this blue bar right here shows you the atmosphere and how far up to the atmosphere it is this is ground level right here and this mean this bar right here means you're in space and as you see we are through the main atmosphere into the semi upper atmosphere we are not going to be going up a whole heck of a lot more in fact i'm going to hit m and we just went over our apopiopsis apoapsis i guess is how you pronounce that apoapsis uh, apoapsis means the highest point in your orbit so we just passed our apoapsis and we are now headed back down now in general when you with these rockets you want to roll the rocket over so it is facing away from the ground as it comes down now in this flight it's not a major concern we're going to go ahead here in a few moments and we're going to hit space bar and as soon as we hit that space bar it'll release the parachute but once you get going out of the atmosphere and you're coming back in, you want to face upwards with these kind of rockets to keep them from burning up. Now, right now, the game does not implement that. You are not going to burn up no matter what you do. But later on, that will be built into the game. So you are going to want to make sure you face up. All right, we are up just about low enough to release that so we're going to push it out now i don't actually expect this to open up until we're about 600 to 500 feet above the ground Be right about now there we go now it's just a matter of landing and we'll call that a successful flight and obviously this moment this part takes a moment but this once you've got your parachute open and you're coming down slowly pretty much in general at this point you can say that their mission was a success not always though it depends upon how you build your rocket i have actually had some rockets where i've had my parachute open i come down and it blows up because i had things too low or i still had a whole lot of flu fuel in my engine and it came down too fast or the parachute opened too late <coughs> all right here in a few moments we will have landed and have completed our first flight ah did you see that the engine exploded even though i had no fuel left in it the engine still exploded and that destroyed our parachute as well but our carbon is still alive so we can still count this mission as a success now once we're landed and we're no longer moving we can come up here and recover vessel that'll recover the vessel and give us back our science that we attained during this flight in fact here we go we earned eight and a half science on this flight we got let's see here it shows our science value right here we got three and a half from the crew report that we made while flying and we got five from the recovery of the vessel so we are done now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go right back over here to the launching pad we're going to grab our alpha shot and we're going to hit launch again but we're not going to actually launch this mission i'll show you why we're going to earn some free points right here
This is very easy. So we're just going to hit this crew report. We don't even need to move. That gives us one and a half right there. Now, no danger of losing them. Let's give an EVA report. And hit F to make them board and recover the vessel. Bada bing, bada boom. We have science. Very easy to do. And you can actually do that multiple times. In fact, we are going to do this a couple times. I know it's kind of cheaty, but hey, it's an easy way to earn a couple science. And that's, in career mode, crucial. Right here at the beginning, it doesn't seem like it's a whole lot, um, or it won't seem like it's a whole lot, especially once I go and show you the, the science thing. So we can keep this data. And actually, if you see, we can transmit it at 100% value. But we don't have any comm stuff on this ship, so kind of hard to transmit something when you don't have anything to transmit with. So we'll keep that value. We'll do another EVA. Oops. And we'll do an EVA report. And recover vessel. Now, normally, you would have to have him board the ship again. But notice he only gave us the EVA report from the launch pad because he wasn't in the ship. So we kind of missed that that particular roost. But that's okay. So yeah, let's go ahead and clear, the, clear it. Boom. Now we get the other one. So now we're ready to go back again and gain some more. There we go. We're back out here again. So we're going to hit that crew report one more time. Notice we're still getting some science value from it. Hit that EVA. Grab that EVA report. Board the ship. And recover the vessel. That's ideally the way you want to do it. Now the easy way to do this the, without running a risk of him falling off the ship is to remove that engine off the bottom of it. But we didn't do that. All right, so we've got 19 science. Now with that, we're going to go in here to the science section and show you what we're looking at. Now this is what we've already got. As you see, this is technology we started out with. This is the next technology level. We're going to grab it. And that gives us the TR-18A stack decoupler. It gives us mystery goo containment unit, which we're going to get a bit of science from this as well. We don't even have to launch to get this science either. It gives us the FLT-100 fuel tank and the FLT-400 fuel tank. And I'm being quite honest with you guys, I have never actually used this particular fuel tank. It's just too small. All right, now the next one we want is this one. It'll take 15 science. We are one shy. So we're going to go ahead and close out of here and modify our ship to make a few more science without a launch. So we're going to take this off, hit the delete key to remove it, and let's just go straight to launch. Now, I know you're wondering, how can you go to launch when you don't have an engine? Well, we're not planning on launching, but we can still get to the launch pad. So we're going to go ahead and grab our crew report. We're now only getting a 0.1 value, so we're not getting a whole lot here on the ground. Later, I don't think we'll get any on the next mission. We'll still try it, but, you know. All right, so we've got that. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to add that science thing. Okay, we'll grab this EVA report. Take surface sample. Load. Review report. <laughs> he doesn't think the spaceship was entirely re necessary to get here. All right, so now we board back into the ship and recover the vessel. And like I said, once again, without even launching, we've gotten some science. We actually got 9.6 science from that that little sortie. So before we go back to science hall, let's gain some more science. So we're going to grab these and actually do this. 
I don't want to do, I don't think we need to do an EVA, but so we're going to grab and place as many of these as we can around it and show you what that's all about. Now, because we have so many of those around the capsule, the door to the capsule is now blocked. So our carbon will no longer be able to get out of the ship. So as you see, hatch is obstructed, can't exit. But we can still click on the ship and check, check the crew report, which, as I told you, is going to be zero. But now we can also do this. Investigate the mystery goo. That gives us three. And we'll do that with each one of these. Because... You're only going to get a certain amount of science value out of each individual experiment based on where it's located. Now, we'll actually be able to get some more out of these when we get into space or up into the upper atmosphere. But we are going to run out of all this right here on the ground. All right, got all that. Recover. Now look at all that. I got 5.4 science. But before we click on done here, I want to show you something. Notice all this mystery goo. It's goo. It started at 3, 1.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Now I'm almost willing to bet you that if we go back out on that launch pad and click the mystery goo again, we are not going to gain any science from it. In fact, I clicked the wrong place. Let's back to the launch pad to prove the point. The more you do an experiment in a certain location, the less science you're going to get out of it. As I told you, zero. Does nothing. Right, so that's just about all of the science that we can obtain on the ground. The rest of the science, we're going to have to actually go up into space. Now, done. So let's go ahead and rebuild our, launch, our rocket, and we're going to do one more launch. In fact, we're going to start with a new rocket just to get rid of that stuff, make it easier. Start with the command module. Now we need some fuel to go behind this bad boy. And we're going up and we're coming back down. We're not going to make it into orbit this run. But we want to be able to do some science while we're at it. But we also want to come down safely. So I'm going to add a decoupler here. I also want to make sure I add my parachute at the top. So what's going to happen is when we're done, this decoupler is going to knock off all the engines and this module is the only thing coming down. So we're going to want to connect our science back to this, just like I had it before. We only need six. Connect those bad boys on there. And now we want to connect the engines underneath. I'm going to be using solid fuel boosters because like I said, we're just going up and coming back down. But I'm going to use more than one of them because I want to go up a little bit further this time. Now just to make sure, we're going to check our center of mass and our center of thrust and make sure that they are equatable, that the center of mass is close to the center of the rocket and the center of thrust is close to the center of mass but below it, which it is, and we're good to go. So we're going to call this one Beta Shot. I know, so ingenuitive with my name. Save and launch. Now, I s oftentimes, even when I'm playing offline, I do forget to change to adjust my stages. But as you notice this time, the stages are preset for you. But I'm still going to adjust them slightly, and here's why. Because what the way it's set up currently, I'm going to hit spacebar to launch that first rocket. When that rocket dies, I'm going to have to hit spacebar to release it. Then i got to hit spacebar again to fire the next rocket. And then hit spacebar again to release that rocket. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take this rocket, move it down into this stage. Now what happens is when this rocket dies, I'll hit spacebar. That will release this rocket and simultaneously launch this rocket. So I'm hitting spacebar even less to change through it and it looks like we are ready to go so before we launch I always hit R and T 
R turns on RCS, which right now it doesn't do anything because we don't have an RCS unit. It does still work with SAS, even though we don't have an SAS unit in it. All these command modules are built with SAS with a small amount of SAS built in. So SAS will help pretty much stabilize the ship. And we're going to go ahead and launch in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> for this flight but we will actually use that second engine here in a little while Kerbin's alive. Now, I actually did that kind of on purpose. What I was trying to do the whole time, I wasn't sure that I wasn't going to make it. But what I just did is what I was intending to do. But it didn't look like it was going to make it. it it's, that's a major risk of what I just did. And I don't suggest doing it. Um, I only needed one rocket for this particular mission because I didn't want to go far up because we were using all that science right here. But I've still built that, that second rocket on so we can use it. But there was no way to release the rocket without firing it. So the in idea was that I would fire the rocket and release it. Then I would turn the rocket with my parachute out. So the parachute would pull the top off of it as it was in mid-turn, as you saw what it did at the end. But I was having problems with it because my RCS was still on. So you want to make sure if you're going to try to... You want to make sure you turn your RCS off. All right, we're going to recover this vessel and call it a successful flight. Barely successful flight. So we have 14.6. We've got quite a bit of science, so let's go grab some more. We're going to go ahead and grab this stuff. And look, we have enough to grab this as well. So we need a little bit more to grab this because that needs 20. These are going to need 45. So let's go ahead and show you what we just picked up. We just picked up another engine, LV-909 liquid fuel engine, an LT-1 landing strut, Mark IIr radial mount parachutes. We also picked up an aerodynamic nose cone, which goes on top of rocket engine, rocket fuel stuff, and the, I'll show you later. We've got an AVT-1 winglet and a TT-38K radial decoupler. And we'll actually get into using some of these you shortly uh, what I really want at this stage is on this third third level here and that will be this Rocco max BACC solid fuel booster that is the so far the largest fuel booster that I've seen um, it'll also have the separatron one seems to be a larger gas container and a new fuel engine but so we'll have to wait on that but for now on we've got for now we've got those so we're going to do one more mission. We're going to readjust our ship. Well, actually, no, I don't think we I don't think we need to. Let me think about this for a second, because we're not going to be using that. So we can f land with this. I think that's fine. Um, just to be safe, let's grab some of these. Throw some of those on there. There we go. Now we're going to go up a little bit higher, so we'll actually use the second engine on this run. 
and I think that's it. We're good to go. So we're, gonna, we're just going to go straight to launch. I'm not going to bother renaming the ship or anything. And here we are. We are ready to launch. Once again, before I take my flight, I'm going to check my stages over here and make sure that they're logical. And these are logical. As you see, as I hover over them, you'll look over here, you'll see that they'll highlight as I hover over them. So that's the engine right there. There's a decoupler right there. You see it's in stage two. There's an engine in stage two. There's a decoupler up here in stage one. And then you'll see that we have the control module right here in stage zero along with the parachute. Uh, if you also notice that these science module, science thingies here do not count in the stages because they don't. All right, we are ready to go in five, four, three, two, one. We are going to go ahead and check our science now. That will give us a little bit more science to work with. And as you notice, it only takes six of these goo containers to pretty much kill the goo container at that height. At some heights, you can actually run more missions to get more stuff. In fact, I could probably come up into this atmospheric level one more time and still gain science from it. And while we're up here, we're going to grab crew report. It gives us a little bit more science. And that's it. That is all we can do. So I'm going to come out here and see how much higher we have to apoapsis. Which will be at 61,000 feet. We are currently at 52,000 feet. So we won't take long. Now you can actually speed time up and slow time down. Which is indicated by this here. Um, to do that you're going to hit the, the dot. Or the period on your keyboard. That will speed time up. Or you hit the comma the slow time down. So we're going to go ahead and speed time up just a little bit. Now I'm hitting M key to switch between the map and this view. Now that is your retrograde indicator on the nav ball. That means that you are currently facing away from your heading, which is actually good, especially when you're coming back into the atmosphere. <laughs> As you see, you come back into the atmosphere, you could burn up. Now, right now, the burning up portion is not built into the game, but it will be added at some point. Oh, that is not good. Our parachute broke. Our parachute broke. So let's fly that mission one more time. All right. And launch in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Your 
burn fuel right there. And you can still see that on this screen, just like you can still control your speed on this screen. Now if you notice, I did not... Let me show you. I did not hear... That changes the trajectory, as you can see, of our orbit. So when you're launching, you want to be careful not to adjust that trajectory too much. You want the trajectory facing in the direction that it is going at currently. So I'm going to release that, check our science, and then we should be landing here soon. You also want to make sure that if you do speed up time, you do not want to speed up time during takeoffs or landings. Um, whenever you speed up time, it can have an effect on the physics of the rocket. Meaning that something like coming through the upper atmosphere, your rocket can withstand the, da the damage or the temperatures of it. But when you speed up time, it accumulates much faster in the programming so that your rocket may not be able to withstand it at that point. As you see, we are just about to the range of going out into outer space and out of the upper atmosphere of the planet but we just don't have enough gumption. Now, if we added one more rocket booster onto this rocket, it would make it into outer space. In fact, we probably will be doing that in another mission soon, but not in this episode. As you see, I am coming down a little bit fast, so I'm gonna turn my time warp off. Actually, I'm gonna leave it on. You'll hit the burning stage right around in here. So right in here is where I want to turn off the time warp. make sure that I am facing prograde which is facing away from my current heading and we are coming down on a flat semi flat plainish area which is just above water level now this height indicator is in is always based on your height above water level not above the ground so you want to keep that in mind when you're coming in for a landing ideally you want to be able to you want to release your parachute somewhere around the range of 1000 um, as you saw pre with the previous flight if you release it too soon you run the risk of the parachute getting cut off and successful landing. If you release it too late, you run risk of the parachute not opening and you crash landing. Either way, ends in death for your Kerbin. And in this case, the parachute did open. Once the parachute is opened, there's no danger of the parachute snapping off. The danger of the parachute snapping off is before the parachute opens or during the time it opens. Once it's open and it's holding you, you're good. This mission is pretty much safe unless you have something that can explode when you land. In this case, we do not have any gas fuel tanks left, so it will not explode like it did before. So we will be good. There you go, and there is a successful landing. Now that we are landed, we will recover the vessel, gain our science, and before we sign off, we'll actually go and get some more of the research. We are up to 24 science now, which means I can get this one here, and that'll get us prepared for our next flight in the next episode. As always, a like and a share lets us know that you care and gets us out there. Thank you guys for watching.